In this lecture, let's learn about the dependencies of the use effect hook. To understand dependencies, we are going to use the same demo react app. Let's go to VS code and here, let me close this app component. And here from this application, let's open this login component. Now in this login component, we are creating these five states. And then we also have these event handler functions. So we have this email change event handler, this password change handler, validate email handler, and validate password handler. And we also have this submit handler. And if I scroll down here, we are creating this login form. And in the login form, we have this email input and also this password input. And on each of these input elements, we are using this on change event listener. So on the email input element, we are listening to this on change event. And to that, we have assigned this email change handler function. In the same way, on the password input, again, we are listening to on change event. And to that, we have assigned this password change handler. Then on each of these input elements, we are also listening to blur event. So for that, we are using this on blur event listener. And for the email input to this on blur event listener, we have assigned this validate email handler function. And to this password input for this on blur event listener, we have assigned this validate password handler. So here what will happen is in the web page, every time we enter something in this email text box or in this password text box, for the email, this email handler function will be called. This email change handler function will be called for each keystroke. In the same way, when we enter something in the password field, this password change handler function will be called for every keystroke. Now, when I enter something in this field and when I click outside, the blur event will happen. So in that case, this validate email handler function will be called. and when I type something in this password field and when I click outside of it, again, the blur event will happen on this password field. So in that case, this validate password handler function will be called. Now inside this validate email handler, we are checking if the entered email includes an at symbol. If it includes an at symbol, then this expression will return true. And here, this email is valid will be set to true. Okay, in the same way, here inside this validate password handler, we are checking if the entered password has a length of greater than six. If this expression returns true, then this password is valid. This will be set to true. Otherwise, it will be set to false. Then inside this email change handler function, we are setting the value of this entered email with the value which we have entered in the email field. And then we are also setting this form is valid state. So for that, what we are checking is we are checking if the input field, if it contains this at symbol and the password length is greater than six. In that case, this form is valid is set to true. Otherwise it will be set to false. And when this form is valid is set to true, then only this button here will be enabled. As you can see here in this example, this email is not valid, but the password is valid because the password length is greater than six. But since the form itself is invalid because this email feed is invalid here, this login button has not been enabled. Okay. And we are setting this form is valid state both in email change handler function as well as in password change handler function. So this logic here will be executed for every keystroke which is made inside this email field. And again, this logic, which is same as this logic, this logic will also get executed for every keystroke which we make inside the password field. And this could affect the performance of the application. So here what we can do is we can use the use effect hook. For that, let's go ahead and let's import use effect from react library and let's go ahead and let's use this use effect function after we have created our states. So we know that 
the first argument of this use spec is a callback function. For that, I'm going to use this arrow function syntax. And the second argument is an array of dependencies. Now, let's go ahead and let's cut this logic from here. And let's paste it inside this callback function. Okay, so I'm going to paste it inside these curly braces. And let's remove this logic from this password change handler function as well. Now here, instead of using this event.target.value, we need to use entered email. So I will copy this, I'll paste it here. And here, we need to use entered password. Now, this logic should be executed every time the entered email value changes. And also, every time the entered password value changes. And also, when this set form is valid function changes so here for this use effect we have three dependencies this function set form is valid this entered email and this entered password so we can specify these dependencies inside this array now here since we are specifying this function as a dependency we need not to use parenthesis like this okay because here we are only telling react that this function is a dependency for this callback function then for the dependency we also need to specify this entered email because we want this callback function to be executed every time the value of this entered email changes and also every time the value of this entered password changes with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page and if i enter a valid email and a valid password here you will notice that this login button is enabled. Let me refresh the page here. If I entered an invalid email and if I enter a valid password, you will notice that this login button has not been enabled. Let's refresh the page again. This time I will enter a valid email but an invalid password. Okay, so still you can see this login button has not been enabled. So this application is working as earlier. But this time we have used this use effect hook. Now here, most of the time this function is never going to change. So what we can do is we can remove this function as a dependency for this use effect hook. So this is how we specify the dependencies for the use effect hook. Most of the time, the dependencies are those states which we use inside the callback function. So inside this callback function, we are using this set form is valid function. We are using this entered email and we are using this entered password. So most of the time, these are the states or state updating functions on which our use effect hook might be dependent on. So we can use those states as the dependencies. Now you might ask that in the very first lecture of this section, I told you that we use this use effect hook for handling side effects. Then what is the side effect here in this example? Well, in this example, every time we are entering something in the email text box or password text box, we are assigning that value to a variable. In this case, we are assigning that value to this entered email and entered password. So here also, the UI is not changing, but we are doing something. We are assigning the value entered in the UI to a state. And that's why this is a side effect. And we are handling that side effect using this use effect function. This is all from this lecture. If you have any questions, then feel free to ask it. Thank you for listening and have a great day.